So the original teaser was 30 seconds. Now it's over a minute. Well, in case you don't know, there is a big patch heading into Wild Rift tomorrow. It has a massive event that is based on the story of Ruination. Now don't worry, we are not talking about the scary one, we are talking about the good Ruination. And I really mean, this seems to be a fully lore-based event with comics, cinematics and game modes. Previously we talked about this in a separate video and since then we got a bit more teasers and things seem to be going insane. See, we learned that Wild Rift is getting a PvE event called Last Stand. The name should kinda hint what's going to happen here. Here you play as Kalista using the human Kalista skin, which is a new one, and you fight in her infamous Last Stand on the Blessed Isles against the Knights of the Iron Order. And recently on the Chinese YouTube we got more teasers that we will even get to fight a boss. Human Hecarim whom we have only ever seen in the art of the Ruination novel. Also, this entire event should have multiple chapters, all of which is still focusing on the origin story of Kalista. Which also means that there is a tiny chance that we will get to see Necrit again. Now, about a week ago, Skin Spotlights managed to dig out a very short version of the cinematic in the files of Wild Rift. I'm gonna assume this short version of the cinematic is the one that plays in-game. But literally today, Riot gave us a longer version of the cinematic that is also voiced. And this one serves as a bit of an introduction to the story we're about to witness in this event. And because it has some really massive ties to the lore, let's dive in. Now before we start explaining all the hidden story here, I quickly want to address the comment section of the original teaser. No, not those. I want to talk about the fact that a lot of people thought that this cinematic was made by Fortiche because it kind of looked similar to Arcane. Where I really want to say... You guys couldn't be more wrong. I doubt Fortiche would have time to make these cinematics while they are still trying to finish Arcane 2. I mean, they even outsourced their own teaser for what they are working on. Now, the reason why this art style still may look familiar to you is because this was made by the same studio that worked on some previous cinematics around Wild Rift and League of Legends. But now, with this settled, let's dive into the cinematic. The cinematic begins with a voice. Calista. Some may think that this is an eerie voice of the Black Mist teasing what is about to happen, while others may think that this is the voice of Isolde, who have been a big part of the entirety of Callista's story. But those of you who read the Ruination novel will know that this is the voice of Soraka. Yes, every time I tell people that Soraka was part of the Ruination storyline, people freak out. And let's not even talk about Rise or the fact that Zillion was mentioned. Anyway, long story short, near the first quarter of the book, as Kalista ventured out into the world to find a cure for Viego's dying queen, she traveled west from Camavor and ended around the Serpent Isles. This was before Bilgewater even had a chance to really form up. And around the places where the Buru are now, in a hidden cave surrounded by waterfalls, Kalista found Soraka, who really liked sipping on her tea. Anyway, here, and just remember that I am skipping a lot of details and a lot of what happened before then, it's all for the sake of simplicity. If you really want to experience the entire storyline, read the book. It's amazing. Anyway, here, Soraka told Kalista about her possible futures. And she told her that if she sticks to her current path, she will cause a great calamity. And what's amazing about this entire cinematic is that it shows us the futures Soraka foretold. So going back to the cinematic, we can see that it begins on the Daggerhawk, which is Kalista's ship which should be also operated by Venix, our amazing furry Vastaya which became Kalista's best friend. Also Venix was technically her captain. However, because the studio would have to make a full 3D model of Venix, which wouldn't be cheap considering the fact that Venix has a lot of fur, we can't really see her in the cinematic. And I don't blame them. However, the chances are we will get to see Venix at some point in Wild Rift, 
because she was teased to be in one of the comics. Anyway, a really important detail is that this ship has a golden maiden on the front which is something that was also directly pointed out by Soraka in the story. In fact, I managed to find the specific quote in the novel. You seek the isles hidden in the mists. I say you will be better off not finding them. But if you will go anyway, and both you and I know you will, I can tell you that the Golden Maiden of the Sea will take you there. Now at this point in the story, Kalista wasn't sure who the Golden Maiden was. But of course, now we know that Soraka was referencing the decorations of the Daggerhawk. So after this, the cinematic shows us the myriads of futures which Soraka foretold in the novel. In one, we can see Kalista leaving Isolde to die and leaving Viego to die of grief as she flees Kamavor with Ledros to live a happy life. Yes, indeed, there was something special between Kalista and Ledros and under the right circumstances, they would be together. And I really hope that later this event shows you all what's gonna happen to them, because that's gonna be interesting. Of course, in order to achieve this happy future, Soraka hints that Kalista would have to give up on her promise, by which she means Kalista's promise to find a cure for Isolde. Now after this, in the next vision, we can see Kalista as the Queen of Kamavor. But she's not replacing Isolde, she is not next to Viego. No, here she holds sanctity, which means that she would be the ruler of the land. And again, Soraka confirms here that Kalista would be a wise and just ruler. But by going this path, Soraka also hints that she wouldn't be a ruler for long. Because Kamavor has many enemies that's both on the outside and inside. So being just and wise wouldn't be the best for survival. So yes, the chances are Kalista would very quickly get backstabbed, especially with Hecarim still being around her. And of course after that there is also the third vision, the one that happened. A future where Kalista fulfills her promise, but as a result she causes a great calamity. In the book Soraka simply mentions that darkness will come. She also teases how the darkness can be banished and perhaps that's a little bit of a hint for the Sentinels of Light, but when it comes to the darkness she somewhat paraphrases that in the cinematic. Now during this vision we can also see Kalista transforming into the spirit of the vengeance in the front, but you can also see that behind her you can see the shadow of Hecarim, because of course you should know that Hecarim together with the Iron Order were the ones who betrayed Kalista and um, I think you're gonna see what's going to happen. A hint for this might be Kalista's flashback of her violent transformation by the Black Mist. So yes, here you can see how it's transforming her. You can also see Sanctity falling on the ground, which is foreshadowing Viego's death. Although he did get stabbed by his own blade, so um, it didn't really happen like this. And then you can see Kalista becoming something she never thought would be even possible. Which leads us into the end of the cinematic where we can see the Blessed Isles. With the capital city of course being Helia. And you can see how accurate it is because it looks exactly the same as Helia in the Ruined King game. But unfortunately that is where the cinematic ends and that is where the events of the Ruination begin. I really have to say... All of this is absolutely awesome. And I really wish there was a way for League PC players to experience this too. Because I know that the vast majority of the PC players just don't play Wild Rift because it's a mobile game. And so most people are gonna miss out on this amazing lore. I mean in the teasers they also included the comics, there should be some short stories, but also they will have conversations between the different characters. So now I wonder just how deep will the story go? It might turn out to be a great alternative of getting through this story without reading the novel. I mean there was already a great alternative, uh, that was the audiobook. But yeah, that's kinda it for Kalista's introduction into this story. And believe me when I say that I am surprised more than you that uh, this video is not that long. But also I hope there is gonna be at least one more cinematic after this. Maybe one that shows you 
Callista's end? Because that would be quite an incredible scene. But more than that, I know there is a really low chance of seeing him in a cinematic. However, there is the tiny chance that when it comes to the comics, we might get to see Necrit again. And hopefully he will have more hair. 